Let's go to the Murray-Darling Basin, where a whole lot of farmers and local communities are railing against a move by Tanya Plevisek, the Federal Environment Minister, to take a whopping 450 gigalitres of water off farmers just as we're likely to enter a period of drought. Plevisek is so dogmatic about the idea that she says nothing's off the table at this stage when it comes to meeting these green targets. Farmers say will jeopardise Australia's food security. Joining me now to discuss this, someone at the coalface table grape grower from Mildura, Greg Milner. Greg, welcome to the program. Uh, I'm always keen to talk Thanks, to real Peter. people to help us understand the impact of government <laughs> policy on the ground. This plan by Tanya Plevisek, uh, you grow grapes up around Mildura. Uh, the sun razor where you are is a huge food bowl for Australia. What's the impact of this plan on, on you and farmers like you? This plan or the perceived um, plan that they intend to put in place uh, will certainly have a big impact on food production uh, across this nation. Uh, we in the Cerasia region are one of the major food production areas uh, and produce a vast range of uh, produce and if they take 450 GL out of the system it will have a devastating mm. impact on this region and on food production right across um, the nation. Why, why is the water being taken off? She says it's to, to put it into the South Australian Lakes system. Uh, that's because the Murray-Darling, we're told yet again, is in poor, poor health. But this has been going on uh, for a good 15, 20 years now. And farmers are the ones all throughout this process that just have their allocations continually reduced. What's been the level of consultation? First of all, Peter, we've been sold a pup. This is a whole lot of lies in relation to the uh, the lakes, the amount of evaporation that occurs out of the, the lower lakes um, far exceeds the amount of water they want to buy back. Um, what they are trying to do is tell the community a whole lot of porky pies. In, in fact, what they are going to do is put huge amount of pressure um, on the price of food in the supermarkets. We saw um, a little while ago when the floods uh, were in Queensland how people were, were upset about paying $11 for a lettuce. Well, if this um, buyback goes ahead, you'll be paying $15 a lettuce, you'll be paying $6, $7 for an avocado, you won't be able to get any, any orange juice. Uh, the, these commodities that are uh, available now will be uh, a luxury in the future if this plan goes ahead. Well, when was the last time Tanya Plevisek fronted up to Mildura and listened to growers like you? She'd be scared to. She would be absolutely scared to because she is afraid of the truth and she wouldn't be able to uh, have an answer for the truth that is here. Um, too often politicians sit in Canberra, they listen to their bureaucratic uh, advisers and uh, they tell them what to do and they just go down the party line and they think that uh, to follow this um, line of thinking will get them votes. It's got nothing to do with science, mm. it's all to do with vote collecting. But what will happen is the people in the cities will realise when it's too late the price of food and the unavailability of, of the food that they uh, are quite comfortable and happy um, to be partakers of won't be there anymore. And once you get mm. rid of the farming community with all the expertise that the farming community and growers such as myself have, you take that out of the equation, you can't get it back. You, it, just, it just won't come back. Uh, and it's going to be a sad, sad day. Do, do you think you're being sold out, uh, communities like Mildura, growers like you, do you think you're being sold out for, for green votes in the city? Of course we are. It's as plain as a nose on your face. Um, they have... Uh, the government has no idea of the reality of what goes on in the on the ground here. They will listen to the voices they want to listen to. They won't listen to common sense uh, and they, they virtually choose the information they want. Give us a sense of what this would mean to a community like yours because it's not just uh, you know when the farmer goes out of business that the farm goes but it's all the allied you know the guy services the header and the, the fuel 
a distributor in town, a, the, the primary school that's got the kids from the farmer in the school, all those things are impacted, aren't they? Those, those things certainly are impacted, Peter, but um, just to give you an idea, the 450 GL would mean that you take out of production all the farming area from the downstream of Swan Hill to the South Australian border. That whole area would be taken out of production uh, and the impacts that that would have. Now, we have, as farmers, have to put up with, with um, uh, the pressures that uh, governments bring to bear, but uh, as we deal with them, it's not only going to be the farming communities in um, Sunraysia that are going to be impacted, and they're a long way from the cities, but it will be the cities themselves that will no longer have access to all this food that they have um, mm. free access to now. It just won't be available. I mean, they can get a lot out of Queensland, but when it runs out of season in Queensland, it, it, it comes from places like um, Sunraysia and Mildura, it just won't be available. So, so what we're I hear you, Greg. Is we've got I, I, it's of, just uh, so important yeah. that we can speak to you. Please. Thank you. Oh, we'll leave it there. We'll come back to this issue. As you know, I'm fired up about farmers having their land crisscrossed by these transmission towers. Now they're losing their water. They've got wind farms and solar farms being inflicted on them. <laughs> Are we serious about being an agricultural country or not? That's Greg Milner there from Mildura.